Are you an adventurer looking to take your hunt to the next level? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the East Meets West Hunt podcast presented by Onyx. Right now, I'm hot and heavy using Onyx to scout mountain bucks specifically, doing some shed hunting, some spring scouting. And uh, one of the things that can be a real benefit for you, especially this time of year, if you're trying to pick up some sheds off of, uh, you know, these big woods deer, if you use the, the timber cut feature on Onyx, the layer, turn that on and on any federally owned public land, you can see where all of the timber cuts are and what year that they were they were cut. So, for example, I'm looking at an area now on my screen, well, one that was cut in 2018. It's a newer one, some newer brows coming up. Might be a hot spot in the winter. And then you have some that are older, say back in 2008. They have their own unique you know, food sources, but also might be more of a bedding area. So logging cuts in general can be really helpful um, and are a hot spot for finding sheds in the big woods. So if you want to check out the Onyx Hunt app, head over to onyxmaps.com. You can use the coupon code EMW and that'll save you 20% off of the app. And Elk 101, the University of Elk Hunting is the most comprehensive online elk hunting learning course available today. And this course is fully comprehensive with a bunch of different modules and chapters that go through everything from the planning phases all the way to when you're packing out your bowl at the end of the successful hunt. And that's one of the things I wanted to key in on here is what you do after you get a bull down. A lot of times we focus on, you know, trying to be successful and, and get the bull down, but what do you do after that? And they have some really good videos and diagrams that show you how to go through and completely, you know, butcher your elk uh, to be able to pack it out. And one of the cool things is by using the the app, University of Elk Hunting app, you are able to to um, you download these videos and use them offline in the backcountry in case you forget. Because, you know, if you're from the east, there's a lot of times you're not doing this very often or it might be your first time. So that can be really helpful. Uh, to, if you want to, you know, check out the online course there, head over to elk101.com, click on the online course, and use the coupon code East Meets West. That'll save yourself 20% off of that course. And Mountain Tough Fitness. So the Backcountry All Access program that they have is 12 months of all of their separate smaller programs put into one. It's basically 12 months of daily online training plus nutrition coaching for every season that's designed specifically for the Backcountry Hunter. I'm uh, in week 10 right now of the postseason strength program and um, feeling really good, you know, training five days a week there, mixing it up to some shed hunting and scouting in between feeling, you know, really good and, and confident going into this time of year. Um, I said it before, but this, the mountain tough program really helped me by, you know, investing in myself last year on my elk hunt. And I, I never felt like I was, you know, at a disadvantage and just, just felt really good while I was you know, going through the mountains for 14 days. So head over to mountaintough.com and check out for some more information on that. And uh, so I'd like to announce that we have a new partner on the podcast here. And this is a company that I tried out their stuff last year. I was really skeptical going into uh, making the switch to saddle hunting. But um, after doing it and, and using it, I'm hooked and, and definitely bought in on the, you know, the fad that's, you know, going on with it. I know saddle hunting has been around for a long time, but to be honest, I was, you know, introduced to it recently as most people have. But um, so it was just a natural uh, fit for me to, you know, partner with Tethered. 
So the tethered team has created the ultimate tree saddle hunting setup. The Mantis saddle and predator platform system is truly the culmination of a bunch of ideas and input from thousands of dedicated tree saddle hunting fanatics around the world. And, you know, I, I, I couldn't wait to, you know, get some of the, the, the tethered system to try it last year and it, you know, blew away my expectations. I've not got a chance to use the new Phantom yet, but I can't wait to check that out. So the, and in addition to the actual saddle, they've also designed and engineered and built the, the world's lightest weight platform, you know, at approximately about three pounds of predator platform gives saddle hunters the ability to shoot 360 degrees in a ultra compact and user friendly setup. So with the saddle, you know, being at right about one pound, it allows you to go deeper and further uh, with less weight. You can scout and hunt right on the spot. It's really, it's been really helpful um, for me in, you know, with mobile hunting. So it beats the days of, you know, carrying my big climber, steel climber and, and uh, even my aluminum one, just, just really narrowing down that size and being able to be mobile. So if you want to check out some of Tethered's products, head over to tetherednation.com and take a look at uh, some of their products that they have there and their, their kits. So, all right, uh, I have some news here. Um, what, one thing I've been wanting to do here for a while and uh, just actually remembered uh, that I wanted to do it was, so I'd like to, to you know engage you guys, the listeners, a little bit more and... And I'd like for you to start, you know, submitting some photos uh, to me and either do that through social media, email, or however else of some of your successful, you know, adventure hunts. And I'd like to, you know, talk about it, you know, share a short story, you know, just one short paragraph, um, either something that you did that that um, maybe you learned on the podcast or maybe you didn't, but um, just to be able that, you know, can help someone else or a cool part that the story and how it led to, you know, your success, whatever that is. And um, I want to cover that, you know, on the, in the beginning here, the podcast. And in addition to that, I want to start doing um, a weekly post on Instagram called, boy on Facebook called, called Mountain Buck Monday. So similar concept to what I just shared there, but, you know, submit a photo of, you know, a success, you know, you with a, a mountain buck and a short story to go along with it. And I mean, real short, just like, you know, a couple key points and everything there. And I'll, um, and I'll make a post there and, and, uh, you know, share that with everybody. I think, I think that can only help everyone else by seeing, you know, others be successful and maybe, you know, a key tactic or, or something, you know, that made that hunt special, or maybe it's just the, you know, the adventure aspect of it, but whatever that is, I want to see it. I want you to start sending me some photos. Um, like I said, you can reach out to me on Instagram or through email and I would really, really appreciate that. And in other news, uh, March 21st will be the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers Western Hunting Summit from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Kinsey's in Mount Joy, Pennsylvania. I will be doing two different speaking events there. So there'll be a bunch of different presentations to help. If you wanted to hunt out west, weren't you know, wasn't really sure where to start. If my, you know, if you know you need some more information, then just listen into the podcast here. Myself and some other hunters will be talking um, on some certain you know topics there. The big ones that I'll be covering, I'll be covering e-scouting using Onyx, and also we'll be covering uh, backcountry fitness. So I'm pretty excited to be able to do that and um, you know talk at that event. So if you head over, uh, BHA Pennsylvania has a, a Facebook event of this and there's a whole bunch more information on it there. So you can check that out or over, or over at backcountryhunters.org and see information on this event. But, uh, all right. Well, this, this episode here that I have with my good buddies, Johnny Stewart and Greg Litzinger, they're always fun to have on and talk and, you know, we met up again scouting this year. I didn't scout with them specifically, but uh, we met up at, 
you know, bef- you know, at the end of the the evening, two nights there, and got to sit down and do a little podcast. And these guys are just full of knowledge, and you know, just great, um, you know, whitetail hunters all around. And just, I really think there's, you know, it's it's tough to to find two guys that that can, uh, you know make it interesting and fun to listen to and also give out some really quality information here. So uh, look forward to, you know, hearing some feedback here and seeing what you think. And well, if, if any is are out uh, scouting, doing a shed hunting, good luck. Uh, Also, you know, be, uh, you know, aware of the, some of the Western hunting application deadlines that are going on. Uh, all those things are really important this time of year. I'm trying to keep up with it myself and, uh, plan for, uh, the Alaskan caribou hunt I got going on this August. I mean, just so many different things, uh, going on. And I just, I don't know. I just can't, uh, I just get so excited for hunting season and, and everything else here. But um, so anyways, like I said, some some deadlines that are coming up here. Uh, the Utah all species application deadline will be on March 5th, which is just here in a couple days. So note that um, same thing with uh, the um, New Mexico will be coming up in March 18th. Um, so there's a bunch of bunch of different things coming up here so pay attention to that um yeah well good luck to everyone here and uh let's get into this show all right johnny greg hello what's up boys hi hey bo <laughs> what's going on <laughs> hey bo <laughs> did some hard scouting today yeah February. yeah we didn't, it was we, cold we stayed out and in the deep snow, unlike some guys. What? I we, had. A, I we did, didn't need to go to South. To, uh, we didn't have we, to find the warm weather where the snow was melting. We just go right through it and find yeah. the horns. <laughs> or that's, that's <laughs> try to find them. Yeah, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, who's the one that has the whole pickup truck full antlers? Not you. Yeah. <laughs> that was, not I know. Good. I've been looking for that guy, but yeah. I, I haven't found him yet. I heard about that we're, guy. Well, I mean, we were going to invite Bo along for our scouting trip today, me and Greg, but we figured he couldn't hang with us. The snow was deep, crusted. Of old people, you know. Yeah, that's, that's, we're over 40, and just, them young guys can't hang. So he went south, no snow. It's a little. He's a little softer. so Soft acorns, stuff like that. <laughs> Dirt acorns. Yeah. <laughs> Dirty. Yeah. <laughs> it was not rotting. Rotted, John. Rotting. Rotted. Rotted. Anyways, <laughs> so Johnny Stewart, Greg Litzinger, got you guys back on for the annual scouting podcast, I well, guess. Well, yeah. You weren't it, with us, so it's really not the, same. the, the po- I said podcast. I didn't say scouting. Annual trip. scouting podcast. I didn't yeah. get invited on the scouting trip. This you year. got invited, but... Oh, yeah, your own little spots to yeah, scout five minutes out. away. You know, <laughs> yeah. I just looked where your vehicle was, and I yeah. just marked Wait. it. I marked yeah. it for next week while you yeah. guys are gone. Yeah, we're going. And Bo's up here ramboing in our spots, <laughs> pounding it out. Yeah. So, what you, what were you guys looking for today in the snow? Did you actually get anything productive done, or did you guys just kind of walk around a little bit? We went uh, to a spot that in November with well, no antlers. We had our camera out in November. There was a little bit of acorns, and we went up up the hollow. Not and, rotted uh, acorns. These were r- r- legit acorns with meat in them. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, we dropped the camera uh, right after we got our deer, November sixth, up at hollow. And I know there's a deer living there every every hunting season, kind of away place. Um, nobody gets down in there, and and this buck's been living there for about three years, so. We dropped the camera and we we got in there and uh, pulled that camera, nothing on it. As far as bucks, we had like one two year old, um, little dink, little dink. But um, actually, that, that camera had everything, right? What we had with a fisher, yeah, coon, bear, deer, coyote, bobcat, coyote. 
Really? Oh, I can't. <laughs> yeah. Like, it was like a pl- plethora of just like big, every, That bear was big, too. Yeah, every was, game animal was like, he's like, you got everything on here. Turkeys. Yeah, I had turkeys. turkeys. Long beards. Yeah. That was pretty <clears> wild. <throat> I think I've never, that's the first camera I had. So, every pretty much variety down the down the line. What I mean, what didn't we have, really? Squirrel. Por- porcupine. You had squirrels. We no didn't have porcupine. a porcupine. Do you have a camera at the zoo or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, what, where, how'd you have your camera set up? Or did you have it on a scrape or something or just on a trail? Or? Uh, there was this hillside blowdowns. We knew that deer was kind of bedding this big hollow. Um, it was actually a north slope. Um, just kind of figured he was bedding in them blowdowns. Maybe blowdowns were eight, 10 years old, kind of rotten, laying down and. <clears throat> We dropped a camera in November and and we got there and, and scouted and um, we didn't have no picture of that buck, maybe a two year old. And so when you say you knew he was bedding there, he wasn't. Well, we knew he was bedding there during a the rut, Bill. Oh, okay. we knew he was in there during a the rut, and we hope he, we're going to go back in September, put a camera out. It's like he he's there during hunting season because no one goes in there. Yeah. So do you, do you leave your camera, do you leave some of those cameras up just like for a full year? Like even like, yeah, the ones I forget about. Yeah. yeah. They're there for <laughs> I well, remember I went over Bo's house, the one day his dad I was like, I was like, I, I said, I just found this camera. And I was like, saying, cause you show bone is that look, I, said, I couldn't find it for like a year. It was out in the woods. I finally found it, you know, but <clears throat> well, I started from that what you did, even though your batteries only lasted like a month and a they half did. So yeah. it, it, it was out it for a year it didn't work but but i uh, i was like oh, i'm gonna start doing that because there's always these spots i go to i'm like oh i'd love to throw a camera here i'll come back and i never do so now like today i set up three cameras that i won't check again till october yeah you know i put them in spots for whenever i have my rut vacation to to hunt and i just put that lithium with, batteries with or without snow without <clears throat> so anyways hey we learned a lot from that snow i love the snow um you were eating the snow i was like, i didn't have my pack and i didn't have any water so i just of carried snow with me <laughs> that's exactly what i would picture a day with johnny is usually something like that <laughs> and every cram I we grab us here greg put us in your pack he's my pack mule and i'm like you want me to carry that thing he's like nah i got it but the North Slope, we definitely, and we did a little skit there. Uh, them deer like them steep, steep, rugged hillsides. Or even if it isn't that rugged, we found like. Uh, All the palm marks are on an angle. Yeah, like of an uprooted tree. Mm-hmm. And then, or just like a big dip. And like the deer, if you picture a pretty steep percentage, we're, maybe. We're, we're on the radio here. 40 to. John. 40 degree how's yeah, that yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. John's like, John. you know you put your arm here and you, you do this and well i'm doing that but then i'm thinking about i'm thinking that's like about a 40 yeah. 45 degree, that's, yeah, 40 I, degree. That, that's the thing with any of the any of the episodes of john he's he's like me we talk with our hands a lot and mm-hmm. you, it's it's tough to make it captain knife hands yeah yeah you do the same thing but what i mean what we we're I all mean, terrible what we know i mean greg what we do like when we say, like, what are the deer doing on that steep bank, you know? It's less work. Less what? snow. Less Fine snow. food. It's just falling off that hillside, and they just... Gravity. Were you seeing it, like, were they near springs a lot? Cause I know a lot of times they'll dig around them springs because yep. it's a little bit around more them thawed out. Yeah. That's where I find all my big shit. I mean, we were, we were on a north slope, too, yeah. but it was so steep, they just kind of, their heads, like, damn near into the hillside, and they just reach our hoof up and just and they're really digging like greg said he said they're eating dirt up here i said they're into the roots yeah, it's like dude, they, weird. Were, they were yeah. these roots and i mean some of the spots i found it was like somebody had a shovel in there you know it was just like yeah just besides this couch and there's isn't that amazing all, all these yeah. little like said the vine roots whatever it's underneath <clears> the ground that they i don't know if it's the fern off but that spot this afternoon I literally found in these hemlocks where deer dug like a hole. It's always kind of like a triangle. They put their paw up and they pull back, pull back, and they just fit their nose down in there. It literally, I said, Greg, this deer dug like a, a foot deep, eight inches of snow and like four inches of dirt. It's down there. And it was like one spot. I was like, I don't know what kind of roots they're eating or what dirt they're eating, but it was just like one spot. Natural it, it lacked all that energy to get down to them roots. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, it is. That. It is weird. I mean, I noticed that today too. In some of the spots, I was walking on these side hills. They're digging, and in even spots without the rotted acorns, that it was just like, you know, what what are they what are they doing here? You know, they just, <laughs> just have like just giant areas just cleared out right down into the dirt. And I think it's a lot of the ferns, the roots of them ferns. Uh huh. Um. But I've even been in hemlocks where there's no ferns, even like during November. I've seen deer actually pollen. I think it's a certain root. Maybe it's the hemlock. I don't know, but it's not. It's random. I would These find These deer them. eat just about anything, though. They they're, they adapt. They survive. They're healthy. Be, I mean. You remember last year's scouting trip? It was all ice on everything, so they couldn't dig into the Kind of like this They were year. eating all the twigs. Oh, that's right. You were. Yeah. <laughs> they were eating all the twigs. Yeah. They, that were from any branches that fell and just. You know, nibbling on them, <clears throat> you know, the, the food plots and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, a lot of a lot of steep slopes, and there was probably four to six inches of ice, cold snow, frozen, but they were hauling out, but then we got on a south slope. It was tore up. That probably three point, inches. Yeah, it was just unreal. And it was all just, like, random south and slope. And no horns. Just, just hemlocks and under the hemlocks. They gravitate toward them hemlocks. Yeah. Is that what you see? Single hemlocks? Because although you guys didn't find any sheds today, you know, John, you typically do pretty well up here with finding sheds. Is that kind of what you're looking for? Yeah, we diggings? look for them single hemlocks or a group of hemlocks. I don't know if it's less snow. Um, they, <clears throat> they don't have to walk through. Almost every single hemlock in them big woods is just, there's a bed under huh, Yeah. Greg? It's, is it, it's, if I see a hemlock, I'm you walking, walk to I, it. You have to walk to it. You yeah. got to go look. Yeah, we and, had cert, certain elevation line too. Yeah, we were what fifteen and a quarter or fifteen hundred. It was just majority of the deer sign was right there. All the pawing and eating, you know, right around. I right think around they the were kind of down at elevation to kind of out of the wind. That was my opinion because when we got up on them tops, it was just like, whoo, yeah, they're kind of down. It's great about the onyx, you just pulled up, you see your elevation line, and I was literally just walking because you're without actually looking at your elevation, you could go up or down 100 feet. Yeah. And I was just following this deer trail, and it stayed within 1,500 foot, I mean, for probably a quarter mile. And it was just a big, heavy deer trail just pawing on both really? sides. It was all around that elevation, and we get up higher. Out on a point where the sun beats it, yeah. yeah. Crossing the point. Yeah. Higher elevation, but very tops, way up high. It's like, it's dead. Yeah. Maybe down out of the wind. Hmm. And, you know, this winter wasn't, really bad i mean right now there's more snow and stuff than there has been all year really but that it didn't like cause them to get pushed to the bottoms or anything you know like some years yeah you'll find a ton of sheds deep snow in the bottoms because yep. the, the, there's not as much snow down yep. there so the deer push down in the hemlocks in the bottoms and this year we didn't have a winter that really i feel like concentrated them anyway yeah it's been like the last three four years i feel like we even had that winter up here but you get into the 18 to two foot that yeah. they're going to really concentrate in them hemlocks and down low and herd up. But yeah, it's like this snow, and that's another thing Greg wanted to scout, is this is an old snow. This snow's been down for a long time, and you're going to see tracks. You're going to see sign for the last two weeks. That's what we've seen today. Yeah. And a lot of random, you know, like we're out in the desert. I we call it like about. nothing. But then you'll see a deer track, but um, you'll get in concentrated but there was nothing to the snow was never deep to where the deer were in a certain area because of the snow kept them there. It was, yeah. I feel like you could find a deer horn almost anywhere. <laughs> you know, there's like you look under them hemlocks or where like groups of deer are feeding, but it could be like just walking randomly. And like my analogy to that is like we grabbed one camera today. Um, it's a hunted area. And the road, they feed up along the road at night, and then they head down in these hemlocks down in the bottom. And from what's, that what's road, what's the name of the road? It's uh, Nunya, <laughs> Nunya Road. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> so the road runs like east and west, and they go south down in these hemlocks. And during hunting season, even late season January, um, I like getting down in them hemlocks. Because uh, daylight, they're down away from the road, and there's guys up road hunting. And then there's another road that cuts off that goes out the ridge. But no one late season goes down in there. So them deer, daylight, they get down in hemlocks. So I dropped a camera in January, and uh, me and Greg grabbed it. It was like a 
140 class 10 and All he was there up. not yeah busted up and a couple other deer without horns like guaranteed 150 next year and uh and it was kind of like my theory was like, and that's what it was like. The deer come down in these hemlocks January. They're still in pressure mode to where guys are muzzleloader hunting or rifle. They're in the muzzleloader and they're down in there. They got to be there because they can't be up where they want to be up on them tops along the road during the daytime because of the hunters. Yeah. And they they guys push the clear cuts. They jump out of a truck, jump a guy, and, but they're down in. If if you're still hunting or something, you go down there. But I I never see anybody down there, and uh, so they they head down in there. And I drop that camera in January, and um, so we grabbed that and we had pictures of that buck. I think like January 18th, January 29th, he was there. But my theory was like they're in here in these hemlocks because hunting season. But since January 29th, that was the last time we had a deer. Now till February today's date what is it the 20th 22nd 22nd there was like one coyote so it's almost a whole month that a deer hasn't been through there and it's like they don't they're 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 not they don't have to be hiding from them people they're probably up along we've seen two deer right up along the road so now they know when the hunting season's over they're not confined to that area but that that helps you when you're hunting to to go to them areas, gravitate toward them areas because they're staying away from the roads and shit like they that. Have those but safe zones almost. That's like, their safe yeah. zone, but then it's pretty wild. I I look at it like it's like, it's like you got to go to work every day. You don't want to, but man, I gotta go. So I gotta go. I gotta go. And he's down there, and it's like it's vacation time. You don't have to go to work. It's like oh okay. So he'll just like. And then friends of mine find sheds just like randomly, like bucks that they know that they hunted are just like. In the middle of an open woods, no rhyme or reason. I said, you know what? Because they're on vacation. Yeah. They're, they're done with work. They can't. They're like, you know, like you go to work every day. Hey, like beat your head against the wall. I got to go to work. I got to go to work. They have to be down in that seam working down in them hemlocks, get away from their hunters because they have to. They have to do it. They're forced to do it to survive, to stay away from hunters. But, you know, like the last day of hunting season, you know, like end of January, okay, it's like it's like vacation time. It's like we could just, it's like recess. It's like they would just run everywhere, and that's, that's really what happens. <laughs> yeah. They're just like out moving randomly. There's browse all through the woods. Do they, they have a party? Yeah, and they just, they just go. They're just end like, of the season party? Everything Hooray. must go. Yep. Yep. Everyone just, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> but so there's some certain, if you're in an area where there's some hunters pressure and they're going to, the deer still are going to live under the radar. They're going to know where to live to survive, but recess is out. School's out. They're just like, they're like, all right, let's go. We're, we're rolling. We're, we're here. We're there. You know, I can walk wherever the hell I want. I don't have to hide from these hunters, you know? Yeah. And that's then like, we ain't had a deer on that camera in a month because there's no reason for them to be down going down yeah, there's no tracks they're not they're not don't need to hide anymore school's they don't out. need to go that's to work it. yeah school's out let's go school's out let's we're go. running all over the playground you know what yeah. i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man the analogies i love them <laughs> somebody's listening to that right now going what the fuck is he talking about <laughs> oh i like it it's good with uh with so what you're basically what you're saying is with sheds um it could be anywhere <laughs> <laughs> honestly <laughs> I know. honestly yeah honestly they are Sometimes in open woods, they're just random. Like, that's what I said with Greg wanted to come out and scout when the snow's been down a while. Yeah, we'd get into concentration of deer. And then from that spot to another spot of concentration in between, there's just random tracks. I'm like, or just like we were in like a desert, like no man's land. You'd you'd see a deer track in the last two weeks. So it's like, this deer could literally drop his horns everywhere because he might, it's just, and it's browsing, it's just everywhere. And he's just randomly walking, looking for and food, the, you and know. The bedding was all over the place today. Yeah. All over, in yeah. In the south, you're like, oh, south slope, bedding all over the place. We got them deep hollows, dark, cold, beds everywhere. And yeah. Like, north slope. Just, yeah, north slope. I mean, dark, cold, and you're like, why are you a here? bit odd. Yep. Yeah. But all right, you know. Well, I, I had that, even though, okay, listen, there was some snow where I was at in this one one valley okay? yeah a little snow a little snow this north face yeah. slope had a whole bunch of snow on it and uh in like and right in the like bottom three inches maybe like four probably four or five you know ice easy but it was in a shallow valley and it was cold like you're saying i was up on the sunny hillside and i hear yeah because I, I walk in the sun i don't do any of that cold stuff and i i hear whew, whew, 
I look, and there was all these deer bedded right in the bottom of it. Like, for, did not make any sense of why they that, were there. That biggest track we've seen today was coming out of one of them deep, uh, dark, wet, you know, cold uh, hollows. I yeah. Mean, big track, single track coming down. And you look up, you're like, where is he? I mean, there's no warmth. There's no nothing. Just yeah. pure safety. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. But I think it's just awesome being out hiking. You yeah, know, snow. everybody's out this time of year, you know, it's 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 great. Yeah. But you do the snow usually usually I'm like kind of what Bo did like this time of year I want to find where there's no snow if I, I can find a horn but Greg's like I want snow. I want to go locate trails and sign and learn what they're doing and that's and so that's basically what we did. You know, and it did it yeah, there's it, it there's stuff out. to learn no matter what. If yeah. there's snow or not snow, you just you change a little bit what you're looking for, I guess. And yeah, that that one point, you know, we got them two other possible stand locations uh, to go with that you know, rub exit. Yeah, yeah, yeah exit yeah, line. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's all from the snow. We kind of just come down and we just follow the deer trail right on down to a, a spot. And I was like, oh, and he's like, man, this is perfect. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was I was like I was figuring over here. He's like, no, no. Over here, I'm like, all right, over there it is. Sounds yeah. good. Yeah. And no, no, it was interesting. You know, when we were uh, we were talking last night, I was here with you guys before we went scouting, but we were laughing kind of back and forth about how there's not really, it's really tough to be able to categorize anything and be able to say, oh, if you go look for this when you scout, this is how you're going to kill deer. Yes. Like there's not in the big woods type, it's, there's, there's no. I know for two years, he's telling me about. Hemlocks and sheds. Yeah. Two years, zero sheds in hemlocks. <laughs> yeah. Design, you know? No, but like it's five, five and a half hours. But he's, I, I, he's still looking though. Uh, <laughs> and he, yeah, he's still, <laughs> he don't give up. He don't give up. He's still going to look on every yeah. hemlock. John, you can bullshit anybody. Though. Yeah. It's a problem. <laughs> but another thing, we were out on that point. Uh, a lot of the canopy wasn't really dense and a lot of sun coming through and, um, there was little brows there, but another thing that Greg said he didn't think about that up here, you know, Bo, the the cherries, you know, in September, them cherries fall. Them black cherries, yeah. Them black cherries, them deer are on them. He's like, I haven't even thought about it. You don't have them big, mature cherries like really anywhere else. And um, and I, we thought about it. I said, you know what? Maybe October, if rain a good mask of acorns down low, I said, this point might might be loaded because it's all big cherries um but they will they'll get in them big open woods and they'll they'll eat them cherries that's a good staple well, for them john do you remember remember that buck i was hunting there for like four or five years hercules hercules yeah. oh yeah so he would come to this one spot if i would have known this like hindsight's 2020 but every year we had a good black cherry crop he was daylight active in early October, coming hit feeding on them, feeding cherries. on them black cherries. Just yep, might and, have to hit that. Yeah, and like I, I knew it because there was like this this gated road that went through there, and you'd walk, and it was kind of like sandy, you know, dirt, and you just see the black cherries all over. Yeah, them. when you know that's there, you know, it can be good. You know, uh -huh. It could be good early season. It's not something, yeah, and that's a that's really specific to. Pennsylvania, even this area, for yeah, it is. a lot of it, and I'm sure you know each area has different things like that. But they love those those black cherries, and I said that this year with we're talking about elevation lines and stuff. You know, I was hunting different area. It's got a lot more topography than you know around here, and and I was up towards the tops where I normally was finding sign the oaks. Well, the acorns were all rotted, so they were down. They were down in the lower third where the cherry trees were. And there's all these black cherries on the ground, and that's where they. It took me the whole season to figure it out, but that's what they were doing. They were down there. What time of year? That was like I don't know, October. Yeah, probably, probably all the way from September, even August through to. And a lot of the area up here is like maple, beech, and a few cherries. And I feel like where me and Greg today are on that point, it wasn't like a few cherries. It was like. A hundreds, mass of cherries yeah, like where they would just hundreds of cherry trees. They would just be like running your vacuum, yeah, like the old lady cleaning the floor up or just sucking them up. You know what I mean? <laughs> and that's like with oak trees too. Like if you find one oak, oak, there's no deer really gonna find. You know, there, there's there's gonna be like a patch of oaks or a patch to where you know 
he's going to just stay in that area and just just run his vacuum and just suck him up. You know? <laughs> well, have you ever seen like where you find there's like an area that doesn't have there's a lot of areas I hunt that don't have oak trees at all, and all of a sudden you'll find one oak tree. And it hasn't had acorns, you know, forever, but you, it has acorns one year. Deer don't even know what they are. Yeah, they don't even, because it's just like, what is it? They're just, their brain's off. Maybe when they're running that vacuum. Maybe they're running. It, it ain't on acorn mode, and it just, like, goes right over. I was like. Yeah. It's just, but if you get just, like, them cherries. It's got a it's filter like, for the acorn. Yeah, it's not going to go through, like, a whole thing of beech maple trees and look for one cherry tree and find that. It, it'll be wore out zigzagging because they, they find that food with their nose. They'll find that big patch. It's like if I find one or two oaks, it's like I ain't hunting here, you know, unless it's a white, like, but yeah, it's kind of rare. You want to find it at least a little point or something with, with enough mass, enough cherries and okay, this is good. But I think when we found them cherries, it's like, yeah, this, this might be a spot for an October hunt, you know? Yeah. Catch them in there. Yeah, that's, that's true. What about anything else that you guys. Were- South Slope, huh? Yes. We are. And that's what we were thinking tomorrow. It's like, man, where, where's our South Slope? Cause it's probably There's a lot of the snows in half. You, you guys worried about snow or what? No, us old old timers. No, <laughs> no, we want more. I mean, it's yes. like this is nothing. Uh, niece, I'll just, let's go, let's go, Bo. Back when you were my age, yeah, there was exactly. Snow. I had to walk to school. There was knee high <laughs> snow on the way to school, both ways. <laughs> uphill both ways. Mm-hmm. Yep, uphill both uphill ways. Uphill both ways. Knee high snow. Yep, that's what I heard. But yeah, I wasn't around back then. Back in them days. Yeah. <laughs> so what i i wanted to uh, talk to you guys a little bit about your cat hunt cats we can talk about cats but i'd rather talk about your november hunt uh where, where uh you guys had a little bit of fun oh that that's that's old timers around november we stay close maybe 100 yards from the road you know like maybe guy, young said. guys go back in there we shoot a half dozen deer right there but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Three deer. I wanted to have that. So, Greg, this was your first time in this area actually hunting. You came up and scouted, um, but we were in a really completely different area. Yes. That was like he n- said that place sucked, so we weren't going there. <laughs> yeah. So he said that place Chris sucks. ended up killing his deer yeah. there. So it did, not that it sucked that I I was familiar with this area, and if you only had three days, I didn't. Yeah. Now, you know, like you say, you explore a new area it takes time. Yeah. It's enjoyable, but. I, I mean, I'm locked on. He said it sucked. Yeah, I I know, I know how he is. He's like, I hunt there. Like, no, the place sucks. <laughs> We're going over here. So when you came up, though, Greg, what was uh, I guess what was what were you kind of expecting? Was it what you expected? One seventies, one seventies, one seventy or Johnny bus. Stewart. Well, yeah, you you, know, I mean, you you see the pictures, you hear the stories, you're like. 170 it is. <laughs> yeah, that's all. That's all. Just pass the rest of them. <laughs> I scared the dog. <laughs> He's like, whoa. What was that hand clap? Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it's, you know, I had a, a rough three days in the water gap with just the most awful weather. So I went home for, I don't know, a day, you know, and then came up here. And he had rain. <laughs> it was like, oh, deja vu. It was just, just yeah, yeah, no, out of state. It's going to rain. And the first day was cold. First morning was, it was cold. Yeah. I mean, like, really cold. And then it was just like rain. Um, and then, you know, coming back to the house, I had an encounter with a 130 inch nine in a clear cut. In the rain. Know? Yeah, in the rain. Still hunting. And it's just, you know, them. Five, six year old. Well, it's a, probably a ten year old clear cut. That one there. Mm-hmm. It was just you know, if I had buckshot, yeah. I couldn't even shoot the deer. You know, yeah. We, so if we, we we lock eyes. It's like we both just stare like, what now? And he's like, I can't shoot that thing with a tank, maybe. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I watch him like go through it. Like he's even trying to run away, and he can't really run away because it's so thick. And I come back and I tell him, and he's like, We're killing tonight. And I'm like, All right. So he shows me these pictures, and it was like. Oh, it's like that up here, you know. <laughs> it was the one seventies, and it was like, oh, all right. I'm like, let's do it. We're definitely killing. And then he, and he was like, he was like, I showed him a picture. And I was like, I, I had two cameras on the edge of this clear cut. One set facing like east, and one facing like west. You know, I like putting a couple cameras east, out. Meet, on the same on the same tree or what? 
East meets East, West. East right? meets West. Um, no, it was like a little bit of a, a a ridge, a little flat going into the corner of this clear cut. And to me, it was like an old road, how they went in and cleared that. To me, I could see does just pounding, like does, yearlings pounding. But I felt like maybe a buck would cross cut that. And uh, so I, I, I watched that trail and that flat coming out of that clear cut. And I, I seen a couple... I had some, you know, does and yearlings then, like, aiming to the left down along the clear cut. That's where I had the bucks. But I had two cameras, and I went, and when Greg was out, uh, and he had that encounter over at 130, I said, I'm going to go. It was raining, perfect time to check him cameras. And I grabbed the one, and when I'm walking back, it's only 150 yards from a road. Like, I parked, I ran in there, and I hear a deep snort, and, like, I see a tail run. I'm like, oh, man, that was a buck. I know it was. So, and I walk, and I'm like, it was standing right in front of my camera. Like, I couldn't wait to, get, to check it. You know, like this buck, and it was like a, maybe 100, 110, I don't know. So I checked him, and he was on that flat. So there was that buck there, and that was 11 o'clock in the morning. And um, the, there was, on the other camera, that morning, there was like 140-inch 8. Yeah, and, dude, and, you killed. Yeah, yeah, like 150, 60-inch 13. They were there both that morning, and that one, at you know, like right at daylight after 8, 9, and then that, that other one that was in front of my camera, there's three bucks there. Like All that morning. Clear cut? Yeah, just like satellite yeah, that that morning. clear cut. The wind was coming out of that clear cut. I'm like, I said, Craig, Craig, we're going to sh- I said, we're, we're going to kill. You're, you're going to get in here. You're going to go hunting. Yeah. It's just like hypervent. Like, yeah. you got to show. Dude. <laughs> what was the date of this? Fifth? November 5th? Sixth? Sixth. Six is, six is when we put oh, yeah, the camera fifth, up. The next, yeah. So it was the fifth. So yeah. we parked along the road, and I said, go and. You know, I looked at Onyx, boom, right in that corner. I said, there's a cherry tree that grows with, like, four trunks. I said, get up in that, you know. And he went over and got up in there. It was right well, on the corner of that clear cut. He Go tells ahead. me there's a, a cherry tree with four trunks. I'm thinking there's going to be, like, one cherry tree with four trunks. Yeah. Not, like, six of them. So I'm, like, walking in, like, You're like is it one. that one? No, is it that one? And it's, like, and it's, like, all near that pin. So I'm, like, hmm. And I'm like, I was like, I'm going to take a picture and send it to him. I'm like, I'm like, no service. So I'm just like, <laughs> I milled around a little bit. I'm like, and I was like, a, a trail and a rub. I mean, like. Yeah, he nailed you know, it, though. Like three three yards off, you know, three foot off this tree. I'm like, it's right here. You know, and I, yeah. and I, climbing up. You know, I get this. Minds, think you know, like. Climbing up. And uh, I just got up and I hear this. Whoosh. And I'm like, and, you know, it's like right behind me. He's, you know, the, the air I kill is right behind me. I don't have anything ready yet. I'm still, like, trying to get up the tree. So I turn around, and it's like, and, I'll, you know, he's making a scrape. I can see his horn. So I, like, hurry up, get ready, end up, you know, shooting that, so, you know, three yards, drop him. I call him. Spine to that. Yeah, spine. <laughs> drop him, call it, you know. He's like, so he comes over. He's like, all right, drag it out to the road. I'm going to get up in your tree. I'm like, all right. So we left to stand there. And I literally walked to the road, walked down to his Jeep to, to pick it up and drove back. And he's like, shot the big eight. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, I'm literally like, uh, all right. So go, I thought he was like fucking around, but no, sure enough, you know. And and I, we went in. I was like, I said, leave. I said, I watched the fall. Just leave it go. Leave it go. I said, we'll put Jason in here tomorrow. He's like, and then we're out near the road, gotten his. I'm like, he's like, come on, let's go look at him. Like, yeah, 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 let's go look at it. So we go back here and uh, rip the guts out and drag it to the road. And we park his truck, load both these bucks up, and then uh, come back here. And then said, Jace, we got a spot for you tomorrow. Oh, oh, I don't know. I said, yeah, just come on. I'll take you in before daylight. And he goes in and he smokes one at what, like two in the afternoon? Yeah. And uh, he's like, where'd you, where'd you gut your deer? I said, like, I bought a road. I did, not I got it right where it fell me. And we were like, ah, you went. That guts don't bother people. Like, oh, I can't go to Denver. They don't yeah, even know what got he, back. He, so like, he said he, he shot at one. Then he said he hit it. He shot at one. Think yeah, I'm, when he think comes back to camp. It. Yeah, and he pulls back in here, and he's, like, holding the red arrow yeah, like, yeah, right yeah. here. And, you know, we went and got it. You know, it was like, <clears throat> and that rain was coming. It wasn't the best shot, you know. It was dead deer, but still. And rain was going to come that night, so we're like, we should go. Yeah, you know, we he was debating yeah whether to stay and go yeah. the next the next yeah, morning. You guys killed me because you know I I was hunting in a d- different area. I'm just getting these texts. How far like, were you from the road? 
too much. far. Yeah, three miles <laughs> too far. And but I was getting, I was getting these texts. It's like. Greg scored. Yeah. Johnny scored. Yeah. Like what? What? <laughs> and then just like yes. just going down through. So like, it, you know, in a twenty hour span, we killed what five hundred, yeah. five hundred inches of antler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was unbelievable. But under twenty four hours. Isn't that yeah. when you find a hot spot like that though? It's you can do really whatever. Like <laughs> I, I, I couldn't believe it when he said he shot his. Like I'm literally just like coming back. Like it's been forty five minutes. I mean, I'm like, Get the fuck out I went. I like. I went and helped him drug his deer out to the road. My Jeep was right there. And like the whole time we drug his out, we were like being quiet, you know, we weren't celebrating or nothing. And I like literally grabbed my bow out of my Jeep. I didn't have a safety harness. I had no range. I had nothing. I had my bow and maybe a couple arrows. And I went and got in that tree. Maybe a couple of arrows. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and he come out and the doe, the doe come out of the thicket. And he must have been breeding her because she come out and wagging her tail feeding and i hear Bleh. and it wasn't a deep like buck grunt it was kind of like a like another doe and she just wagged her tail and he popped out of the thicket behind her and i'm like all right you know and then she fed she actually ran toward the road where greg was and i thought he was going to take off and he just kind of moseyed and uh, i'm just like he come by that piece of beach brush and i was like that's 35 that's 35 i know i blew him right through them shoulder blades and he just like <laughs> snow plowed <laughs> So put the ram cat through the put the ram plate. cat right through. Oh, I ain't got man. a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's um. So t t tell me a little bit more about that. The setup on the edge of the clear cut. This this four this quadruple trunk cherry tree. Why 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 did you pick that spot? Um, it was kind of a plateau. It wasn't like any. There wasn't much terrain there. Really flat. Southwest predominant wind blowing out of that clear cut. Southwest um, blowing toward the road. And so we were between the road and that clear cut. And the deer, would, and uh, the deer just satellited. It was kind of like a, the, the clear cut was kind of like a rectangle that went from east to west. So I think the does bedded in there and hung out in there. And the deer just, just ran kind of east to west. The bucks on the north side just kind of scent checking it. And so what we actually had that tree like set up like 30, 40 yards out of that clear cut to the north. And it just kind of the deer come come out. The, the bucks were just satellite net running like mm -hmm. kind of east and west, catch kind of, kind of like a, a crosswind smelling the deer that we're in there. And we just, yeah, exactly. it was like a foolproof. I'm like, we could hunt here all the time next year if a predominant Southwest wind yeah. blowing out of that clear cut. And another main factor was, um, as you drive down the main road, you can't see that clear cut. You see kind of mature woods and that, that clear cuts in there 150 yards to where the other side of the road going up the highway, you could see it's a clear cut. And I had cameras over there. Yeah. And what I had on my camera was hunters. Because I could see that clear cut and they were hunted. Yeah. So the I know deer, I know this spot. You know this spot. Well, Bo actually told me, hey, I seen a deer crossing there again. I'm like, hey, I know, Bo. I know. I know. I actually, 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 so actually, we got to thank Bo for us. This is all deer. because. Is that me. what he. Yep. Yep. This that's, is all that's the angle he's going for right now. I think so. Yep. I, also John, too. I seen right at your spot. I seen deer crossing again. I get I, in there I before did, I do. I did text you all the time, but so He's, basically, it well, that, might have been two or three years ago. But basically, that means that I guided you guys. He did. He helped us. So it's so great. My deer has an asterisk now. Yeah, two asterisks. Two asterisks. Just ten years, I get two asterisk deer. <laughs> yep. Hey, it is what it is, Greg. But you that know. that clear cut though is. Those deer were parallel in that bigger box. It's so thick, you know, because I, I I speak from hunting the salt marsh. Yeah, they will avoid the heavy, thick frag. You know, if they're cruising, because it's a lot of work going through it. Yeah. and that clear cut so thick. Except for that, you know, they just you know just yeah. right on Satellite. the outside yep. where they can walk. Winds blowing right you know, when the where they can actually walk, still in cover, but not be laboring you know, like labor intensive because it's the rut and they're cruising and they're going to take the easiest route possible yeah and if, if they're if they're on a doe they don't care they'll go through anything yeah. but if they're cruising like that it, i totally agree at a spot i don't i can't i think it was a west wind that was perfect for any westerly wind southwest northwest whatever but 
there was this little like old, I don't know if it was a logging road or something that kind of ran like 30, 40, maybe even 50 yards off the edge of that clear cut. And this one was, I don't know, it was, it was pretty thick. I don't know if it was even 10 years old yet, but still pretty thick. But they didn't want to run through it. Same thing. It's I know if I could sit in that same tree for a whole week, you're going to get opportunities at it. My camera showed it that I had running on scrape there. They just run, you know, it again depends on the wind, but like anytime there's that wind, it's just those clear cuts like that. It's, it's money. And that's the, that's the brows. That's where the does are. Yeah. Yep. Or that was, that was pretty awesome. What, what did we name that tree? We gave it a name. I was guess the, I forget. We had a bunch of names pop. Yeah, Did you guys yeah. put me in there? Yeah, we probably could, Bo. Since you're having a hard time, <laughs> he was he was making films, making movies. You know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah. Do you, do you? Uh. Yeah. So, Greg, I was telling you last night, but John, he was giving me a whole bunch of shit about. Uh, it was like end John? of January, and he's like, "Let's go to Ohio." And I said, "John, oh, yeah. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done hunting. Done a more. No, I'm burned out." Bo was burned out in January. End of January. <laughs> I've been hunting since September. I just was done, okay? And he's he's giving me a whole line of I shit. I text him. I was like, yeah, they don't make them like I used to, <laughs> Bo. I know. That's all right. That's okay. Yeah, he kept saying that. And then he's he's over there on his Instagram story talking about how his friends are soft and all this <laughs> stuff. I, I said, John, just tag me here. Yeah. Call me out. <laughs> And uh God, being soft on me. Yeah, so anyways, you didn't see shit, but so that's good. But uh <laughs> yeah, I don't weather know. was warm. Yeah. And uh well, oh he's like, yeah. According to biologists, said, weather come- has no effect on deer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like he's funny. like, well, he, he goes, Ah, I was gonna have you I had a spot set up for you behind my camp there in Ohio with a big old corn pile corn for pile. you to sit uh I felt bad for the guy. I was like, I said, is this a, am I a pity party here? Like, yeah. I, do I need help? Well, he hunted hard since September. I kind of, I, I was, I was feeling it. I felt bad for my bro. I had a big pile of gold there. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow acorns. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that was, uh, yeah. So now I, I was like, I, I can't go either way just because he's. You know, feeling bad yeah, for me. Okay. I, this is the He's kind like, of vibe I'm giving. Come on, I, I gotta come on. Come on, I'm burned out. Yeah. So, are you guys gonna hunt this year or what? You gonna hunt the same tree? I'm. We're gonna run them cameras there and see if see if there's something we want to shoot. But we gotta run two cameras. That's one thing I learned about Johnny's running cameras. Run two if you don't have a, a specific trail that we can cover a larger area. Okay. Yeah, I uh, was it something I said. <laughs> Johnny just got up to go take yeah. a pass, so figure we have to make sure that's that's called out. Uh, but <laughs> so tell me about his two camera strategy. So like on every like spot he wants to check out, there's two two cameras. Well, the, well, that spot there, he's like it's such a big area. One camera wouldn't do it, you know, which is, which is true. Because yeah, the, a few three or four trails coming in, and if you run a camera for for weeks, you're expecting some intel, some. And if well up here or or anywhere, if you're off, just one trail or, or one tree, that camera it's wasted intel. Yeah, it's wasted time. You literally waste your, especially some of the spots up here. Like, you know, it's labor, very labor intensive. Yeah, if, if those camera isn't set up just right, it's a waste. You know, so if you have two cameras, you're literally covering you know twice the distance. And I was like, oh, I use that. I got a couple spots. I use that in the salt marsh. And, and it paid off because they come through these things. You know, if you're off you know, 10 yards, you might see a deer, but it's just, you know, an outline of a deer. You don't know what it is. Yeah. And he's a smart, smart guy. Is he? Yeah. John, put them headphones back on and quit making a whole bunch of noise. Yeah. Sorry, Bo. Yeah, we were just talking about your trail camera strategies with running two cameras. And I, I always do. I mean, that's, that's why I learned to always keep cameras in my my bag because he always he just straps them around his waist and has them hanging yeah. in different directions and belt loops uh, oh yeah, my belt loop it's really uh my belt i run out of i didn't have a belt so i had to use a strap off my camera 
you always got to have two cameras with you because everybody takes one to take camera. You know, I'm just going scouting and they're waiting for the like the the perfect spot. Yeah, you're working for that perfect spot. You, don't get <laughs> you it, so, never put it out. Yeah, so you take two and you put the one out in a half ass spot. Then you then you take the one back. <laughs> but no, I mean up here it's a lot of flat, and you just look at all the tracks we've seen. Yeah, you go under them hemlocks, but that's just winter time. But in general, they roam. They're nomads. You got to have them aiming every which direction you know and i do depend a lot on my cameras not for just intel to what's there um so yeah but you got to aim one like one way the other you don't know where he's going to come you don't have no idea where if it's like in the winter you track them with that snow they, they're just walking like this just up down left for any, they're on anywhere. vacation yeah now they're on vacay you're right they're just like it's like being at the beach boy <laughs> There's no vacation. vacation. Vacation time. So uh Greg, vacation trail camera strategies. And Greg, you're not a big trail camera guy. You or at least you don't into it. run them very much, right? Yeah. Uh getting into it, you know, wife and kids now that's it it makes putting excessive amount of hours in the woods very difficult. So yes. cameras and even I don't yeah. rarely most of my cameras sit for months at a time. Mm-hmm. Probably, you know, because I, I hunt a lot of different spots, and some of the spots are, are two miles. And for me to just ch check a camera, it it's you know it's it's very labor intensive. So if I'm not, if I'm checking cameras, that means I'm not hunting. You know, in certain times of year, I'd rather be hunting than checking cameras. You know, see, sometimes I'm the opposite way. Like I love checking. Well, I I I always say it. I, I like scouting more than hunting. Yeah. Because back in the day, people was, you walk around, you hike around too much. But then that's what I love doing. So I make it like I'm optimistic and it, it works for me. I scout, 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 like right up to when me and Greg got them deer. I was scouting pretty much all the time, you know. He sat three times and shot at like two giant bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's, I know. He he cracks me up because like. He showed me the spot today where he missed that whopper, that mega giant yeah. that he showed me a picture of. Yeah, it's a you know it's a, it's like a one forty nine. My ass one forty nine. G three is like this. I'm like, that's a, yeah, no, like a one sixty is more like it. Slinging arrows at forty yards. Yeah, that's, that's like <clears throat> I mean, he's completely fine with it. Yeah, I won it. It's good. Yeah, we'll no get remorse. It. Could care less. Yeah, it, nothing. I'm like, if I missed a deer that big, if I you know took a shot at, I'd probably be crying upset <laughs> you know, he's like yeah whatever that was my first time in a tree the year <laughs> you know? I had a lot more time to hunt i know and it, that's i i don't know i i like scout scouting's my thing i love spring scouting i like scouting during the season doing all that but like it's like i don't want to waste time setting up in an area just to say i was in a tree you know no, I mean, exactly like, you said it bo you you, you gotta you gotta find what you gotta know and that's, that's the biggest thing that what, i say you have to, I want to know what's going on in the area. I don't want to hope for a deer to come. But you can be, like, we. I think you and I talked about this before. You you can become addicted to scouting. And you can't kill a deer if you're always scouting. Mm -hmm. Because scouting, you definitely have a faster pace walk yeah. than if you were, like, still hunting or whatever. So still hunting is probably a, a better term. You know, almost like not necessarily still hunting, but, uh, you know, because you're, but you you're very methodical and how you're not just you walk walking aimlessly through the woods. Yeah, you know you your bow's ready like you're ready to go. And you you'll come into them certain areas to where you'll slow it you'll down. You'll feel it. You're gonna slow it down. But other time you might be blazing, blazing. But then you're gonna get to an area where it's like, oh, I need to use this topography. I got to look here and that. But but um, I do like back in it. Like I want to know. Maze my personality. I want to know what's over the next hill i want to i need i want to know what's going on in my hunting area i don't want to hope that god sends a deer my way i just want to hope i hope i see a deer baby jesus you know baby please sweet baby jesus give me a deer you know <laughs> when everybody says like good luck good luck I, say, I don't don't even tell me good luck i don't care about luck i don't believe in it i'm gonna get a deer because i'd rather be lucky than good <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but anyways yeah it's like <laughs> i'm not like that. i'm just like don't wish me luck no I wish you nothing but misery, Johnny. Is that <laughs> yeah. better? From now on. <laughs> no, I but wish you don't. I wish you anything. hardship <clears throat> and misery. No, there, I think there's a couple things that comes with with the way that 
you hunt and, and I try to be the same way, but you have your optimism, like you, you see it, you see it happening, you're going in and it's not just, it's not all just in your head. Like, Oh, if I see me killing deer, I'm going to kill it. There comes work that puts you in those positions, but like you, you just have that positive attitude and you're like, all right, yeah. now it's time to hunt, you know, scout. But it's not just, that's who I am. It's just all the. And I'm I'm talking years of scouting areas and years of scouting in general. You, it all comes together, and it's like, this is good. There's, this is yeah. this is a good spot. There's, now there's now no, it's time to hunt. There's no shortcut to uh, learning or like no trick. It's like okay, if you do this, you're gonna kill a buck. We we're again we were talking about this last night. We at the the reason why you know that that you guys have both been extremely successful and. You know, I'm I'm trying to get to that point. Is just like you screw up so many times, just ridiculous amount of times. You know no, what not to do, and then you. Yeah, just, that's called experience. Experience yeah. is I've done it wrong so many times, and that, that I you know, know. And that's yeah. a time frame. It's not a, yep. a yep. it's not a one season, two seasons. Yeah, that's what we. It's the Greg decade said, it's plus of yeah, this. This is like this is all intel for the last twenty years. And yeah, yeah, yeah I sat in the tree. I only put thirty hours in a tree and shot these bucks, but. What about what about the twenty years yeah. that I put in? <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and you're just sitting there, nothing, 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 nothing. It's just all, it's just like it comes together, and you you just you just know what to do and where to be and it, and when to be there, and it's and yeah, you and you your optimism is uh, at a higher level because all of your experience, all your years of sitting in a tree, hours and hours and hours, is like because people used to tell me, oh, you can't be walking through the woods, you can't be walking, through. just go in there and hunt. And I did that, and I'd hunt for a week, and be like, and I get out, and like I was leaving, like man, I should have been over here. So now I just blaze through. And this is I get to know yeah, the hunt, woods, get hunt to know where I sign. Yeah, find that fresh sign. It's like mobile hunts. I go, everybody's mobile hunters. Like I've been doing that for years. I I, I put a climber on my back and I go summit, Listen, whatever. We just ha- ramble. Running gun just started, John. So I'm gonna stop you right now. Running gun just started. Brand new. Yeah, <laughs> brand new. Yeah, mobile. Being a mobile hunter, gun. it's new. Hanging back. Yeah, it's like yeah, it's all I'm new. Like, but I honestly like look at the people like to go out in the in the spring or summer and hang stands. Is I would only do that if I hunted a spot for five, four to five years that I know. Yeah, you know, and and at that you're only going to hunt that spot once or twice. Then you're, you're going to have another one. But it's always like hot sign. I'm going to go in and find a sign. But um, yeah, it's uh yeah, and then that's no, that's that's true. And like, and yeah, it's funny like he you guys were joking about like the the new style of that and stuff yeah there's there's different things like for me personally like now trying to saddle and stuff that's new and i know it's a big thing now everyone's doing it but like yeah the, the whole concept has been something that us here in the big woods or you know and some of the stuff you're doing salt marshes and the mountains and over there that we've been doing for a long time. My dad's been doing it with climbers for yeah. a ton of years. He'll, you know, he'll he's just, I'm just trying to teach him how to use the stand and sticks type yeah. of deal because he's still on the climber. I'm still on or yeah. He's, yeah. Or he's Johnny's a climber. Yeah. yeah. Or he's carrying the, or my my dad still, I, he just got a pair of, uh, set of lone wolf sticks, but he was using the big steel, like, yeah. ones that weigh like 50 pounds, he clinged together, that's his hang of bangs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough your dad. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need that light shit. Yeah. He goes out there with that iron boy, yeah. you know. Yeah. Big iron, out there. <laughs> <laughs> and he still does it. Uh, uh, I, I, but up here, you can like I could use climbers. There's a lot of straight trees, you know. Like there's different areas you can, but yeah, you can get up. And I, I like him. I don't know. Except a four, the old four tree cherry, really wasn't conducive to a climber. Yeah, <laughs> is that what you were in when you? Yeah, you were in a climber. Yeah, because he told me he's like, it's mature hardwoods. Just bring your climbers. I'm like. All right, I get there. The first morning, he sent me spot. Goes, there's plenty. Yeah, there's plenty for a climber. I'm like, there's about four or six inch diameter tree. <laughs> I'm like, but to me, that's that? where I'm hunting. You know, it's like he's like, there's plenty of trees. I'm like, all right. So I'm like, you gotta watch his looking coach. at the light. I'm like, all right, okay. So he sent you in, in the dark yeah. first time yeah. with a climber and <laughs> no. <laughs> You, see, it, you got to take what John says with a grain of salt because you don't know what. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot more and then, to and, it. And, and then in the evening, I sat. It was you know in that 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 uh, right above that that spong there, that hollow. It no climber trees whatsoever. So I literally had to take my seat off, 
once, take my platform off while I'm still attached to a tree, get up over these branches just so I can actually get up, you know, so I can actually shoot down into something. And I'm like, it's like a lot of work. And then it's dark and it's like, it's taking me so long to get down. And anybody who's ever taken their stand apart to get around limbs in, in the dark, it's sketchy as fuck, dude. Yeah. It's like, I'm probably going to die here, you know, oh. drop my stand and be hanging from my yeah. belt. That, that happened for- to me a couple of years ago in rifle season. Yeah, I, I tried that, readjusting yeah. my bottom and the thing flipped out and I couldn't get it back on. Yeah. That's it's kind of stuff because I listen to Johnny. He tried yep. teaching me stuff, and yeah, in reality, yeah. he's teaching you not good stuff. Yeah, and you know, your buddy Jason had a problem with the climber. <laughs> he's got a problem with everything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he brought the he brought when he shot his his buddy Jason shot shot his buck. He brought the the stand back, and he's like, "I folded it up. Off, yeah. I folded up for you." I'm like, "Dude, it folds like flat, like three inches, man. Like it." Three inches tall. It was, I don't even never seen anything like it. He's like, I wrapped it all nice and neat. And I'm like, <laughs> it was all hog tied. Yes. That wasn't. <laughs> I remember back in the day, me and Jason go to Ohio. This is, I had uh, a loggy bayou with that steel. That was Cat's Meow, but I was like Cadillac. I was hunting in the style, Mo. And he had, he had the old lock on with the screw and steps, yeah. and we go hunt together. And I'm like, I'm like, you know, he's climbing a tree behind me ten yards, and I'm here. And I'm like, I got my had that steel strap on the old, you know. I'm like, yeah, but look at me. And he's like screwing the steps, and he's sweating. And then he he goes, we sit there for three hours, and he comes back down, unscrew like the screw and steps and the yeah. lock on. Like he carried that around in the woods. That was his mobile hunting, yeah. you know, running screw- gun. Yeah, it was his running <laughs> gun. I'm like, and I was like, why don't you get a why don't you get one of these loggies, man? This is the ticket right here, boy. But um, <laughs> yeah, that was back in the day. Was, yeah, I had the loggie, Baker tree stand. Yeah, that was disastrous. You know, Bill, you ever have to bear hug a tree? Bear hug a tree and go up. Yeah, the old Baker. No, yeah. I have not. Even with the loggie, you had to bear hug the tree. I had the no. I was a little. I was a little, was a little more advanced. I had to climb and thing that came with it for pussy the pussies yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you put it down then you flip the seat up yeah so. yeah so it, it was like it had the i mean this was like powder coated paint this thing yeah. was tip powder coated paint. <laughs> <laughs> oh i man. still got it i didn't know you're that Been fancy it. we come a long way huh yeah yeah like like when johnny was up here talking about his his, when his lone wolf something broke on it, and he's like, ah, I've had this thing for like 15 years. Yeah, one of the, he's like, Any place around here have any replacement parts for lone wolf? I was like, No, <laughs> you know, hanging up in a tree, I'm like, Po. But yeah, I went from the, yeah, that's when I got the, it's probably, but yeah, probably almost eight. Whenever they first come out, and I used that climber every all over the country, yep, and killed a total of two deer, yeah. Oh man, that's funny. But so yeah, this this year you guys are gonna do another another rutcation, you think? Or what? oh, definitely, we're gonna I'll, be up here. I'll be coming up. What, what I'm gonna day? do like a probably the the night of the fourth because I'm gonna hunt the you know my wife's birthday is on November second, so this year we're celebrating early because between Halloween Halloween and her birthday, and it's just it makes hunting difficult. Yeah, I am family yeah. man. Because she's like, you don't even want to be here on my birthday. I'm like, I didn't say that. Let's but just move your birthday. I was like, let's just have it earlier. You know? So Yeah, compromise. Yeah. Because now well, Kelly's kid- birthday's on the 16th, so she's she's like, that's law. It's like, well, let's celebrate, girl. Yeah. Let's get it in. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do four days in Jersey Mountains, you know, uh, or three and a half days, and then from there just drive up here i got like seven days to hunt so yeah probably only need two or three and we'll we i told him maybe this year we shoot that one maybe we'll let bo get in our tree yeah yeah well, after you guys are done and you guys have it all we'll skin for four i mean jason's seeing bucks all day i mean yeah, i could have yeah. sat there yeah yeah I'd, I'd appreciate if you guys helped me out a little bit help less fortunate <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah boy. well cool all right, guys. I think we're uh, I think we're about done with this one. I'm about I'm about done here, and your bullshit, to be honest with you. So, Johnny, what? What's you that know? about? Oh, they don't make them like I used yeah. to, Greg. They're just a lot, little softer, yeah. little tender. <laughs> just go with it. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how you.
old men are feeling in the morning when you gotta get up and go hiking again. We're gonna be ah, uh, we'll be up before daylight. We're like yeah. animals over here. Yeah, I get up. I get up two thirty to go to work. So yeah, I just get up. Well, so we, this, we crunch that snow and it's six this eight is a man, inches. This like, is a man shit. Yeah, you know tomorrow. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not driving an hour and a half to go find no snow. I'm. I'm going right through it now. That's what honestly. We did. I'll probably be ahead of you. You'll probably be following. I my doubt back. it. I'm very hungry, Greg. It, no, we got now, many now years. That I know where you guys, you know, killed the, this these bucks at and stuff. I, I might be there tomorrow. Well, that makes one of us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys were there today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Well, thanks for coming on again, guys. And uh, yeah, hopefully. it was hard to believe it's been a year. We were, yeah, yeah. Was it this weekend? A year ago, roughly. It was, March. That, it was in the next. Or, yeah, yeah. It was the first weekend of March. Yeah, last the year. Freak snowstorm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Time flies, huh? Yeah. Another it does. year in the books. Another year in the books, and I still have the same amount of deer dead as I did last year. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey, but you killed an elk, so yeah, that that up. makes up for it. Yeah, it did. congratulations, big deer. Yeah, that was awesome. Yep. All right, guys, we'll see you. Awesome. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of East Meets West Hunt with your host, Bo Martonic. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit eastmeetswesthunt.com, Facebook at East Meets West Outdoors, and Instagram at East Meets West Hunt. If you enjoyed today's episode, please review and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.